Hey, everybody, it's the Draft to School podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host, and joining me today is a brand new friend. She is a deaconess. She is a mental health professional. She is Carol. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It's good to be with you, Harrison. Well, great to have you here. Thank you so much. Uh, we got to meet when I was uh, visiting Fort Wayne and uh, connected on, on a topic that is, is near and dear to my heart. And uh, it's it's kind of your call right now, but this is the mental health in the church. Um, it, it, it's incredibly important. And, and a lot of times, overlooked. Uh, you get to see when somebody has a heart attack and, and they're put up in the hospital. Uh, but so often, uh, mental health stuff just sort of goes untalked about. The, the kids are, are a lot better at this. Uh, and, and in a lot of ways, we're playing catch up to them, which which is is good for us. Um, but we get to sort of talk about it. And in the past, we, we've mentioned you have a mind, you have a body, and you have a soul, and these things are, are connected. Mm -hmm. So um, what is the, the impact on mental health on your, your, on your soul, on your spirit? Oh, my goodness. Well, that's a difficult question because, you know, God has made us with three different aspects to our humanity, our body, mind, and spirit. And when one aspect is suffering, it affects the others. So it's really difficult to pinpoint that question. But definitely, um, you know, when we're having some mental or emotional distress in our life, that can affect um, our, our faith walk, Um and some, for some people, it increases, um, you know, their their faith and their their feeling of being close to God. And for others, um, is is the opposite. So I think it's very um, it, it depends on the individual and how they're responding. So, um, in what ways can it? Like, I can understand how it would drive you farther from God to to feel mm -hmm. anxious all the time, especially when He says words like "Don't be anxious," and you're trying to figure out how to accomplish that. But in what ways can it actually increase your faith? Well, I think everybody realizes that, you know, we are in very limited control of things, mm -hmm. actually. <laughs> and it's very freeing and releasing when we can recall that, you know, God is in control and he is promised to us that he is holding us in the palm of his hand and that he's caring for us even when we don't feel it, um, that we can rest in his promises. So I think for many people, um, just being able to simply uh, let go of trying to be in control of maybe their new diagnoses and um, just resting in the promises of God that he's got it and that he's going to be walking alongside us, um, even in the midst of uh, a mental health journey or physical illness. Absolutely. And so you're, you're sort of pointing out a, a distinction that, that's really important. Mental health uh, struggles on, on their own won't increase faith, but the preaching of the gospel can actually be preached to those who have anxiety, preached to those who have struggles with, with mental wellness. Um, and, and this is the thing that actually increases faith, that, that we actually get to receive more Jesus. That, that's what increases faith all the time, the, the forgiveness of sins, but also life and salvation. And, and, and here too, when we, we struggle in the midst of, of uh, well, the devil, the world, and our own sinful flesh, hearing more Jesus will drive us closer to the cross, will drive us closer to hope. Yeah. It's the best medicine, right? Fantastic. And, and it's not the only medicine either. So, no. so um, we get to, um, one of the great things about your call is you actually get to work with other mental health professionals, right? And so it, this, this, the answer to this isn't just, you know, pray harder and Jesus will take away anything you're struggling with, is it? No, it's not that simple of an answer. So really a holistic team approach is what's needed. So it's always best when um, someone that may be struggling with mental health concern can get an annual exam with their physician, right? Get a physical checkup and especially have some blood work done to see if there's a physical cause or root that may be contributing towards the issue. Um, so consulting with a medical professional, um, receiving pastoral care, uh, is important, but also, you know, if the doctor's prescribing medication, if that's needed to help balance out brain chemistry, um, that can be an important piece. And also having a, a mental health counselor or a therapist that you see on a regular basis. So when we see the most healing taking place is when there's that team approach to the whole person care. Mm -hmm. So this is a place where we kind of get to, to recognize that that team isn't going to develop all on its own. So, so maybe you can kind of help us through this because, um, well, your doctor, your physician won't communicate with your pastor. There, there's laws against that. And, and, and likely in the same way with, with, with your counselor, in a lot of ways, you're going to sort of have to spearhead the fact that there should be a team and, and you're going to have to sort of try and keep everyone in, in their own lane. If your pastor tells you, I'm just going to pray, don't, don't actually go for your physical, uh, we should talk. Um, and in the same way, um, if, if you're, 
your counselor doesn't want you to receive spiritual care, we, we should talk, but also you're going to have to kind of help coordinate the fact that your faith is an important aspect to your mental well-being and, and the same of right. your physical, right? So how do we, uh, especially as teenagers, how do we start to spearhead that when, when there's other adults in the room who tend to really not think about the others? Well, and actually, I just want to point out that research shows that uh, 25% of people with a mental health concern will actually approach their pastor first before going to their doctor, before consulting with a professional counselor or a psychiatrist, they go to their pastor first. And it's because they've built up that trusted relationship and they feel comfortable, right? And they know that they're going to receive um, some sort of help. Um, so I just encourage people, especially young teens, you know, many of you have a good relationship, whether it's with your youth leader, your youth group leader, or your youth pastor, or your pastor, or if you have a deaconess in your congregation, if you're lucky enough to have one of those, I know a yeah. lot of times the girls especially like to go and have conversation with a deaconess, but, um, go into somebody there in the church and, um, just go ahead and start that conversation because the pastor knows good Christian counselors, um, to whom he can refer you to because um, pastors know that, you know, they're not mental health professionals, that we have some training, um, but it's always best, uh, the best healing takes place when you can have good pastoral care in addition to professional counseling. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, in the same way, like if you're about to go have surgery, you, you can invite your pastor to come and pray beforehand. And, and um, in the same way, when, when you're receiving uh, counseling, uh, should you talk to your pastor about that? Should you invite your pastor along? What do you, what do you suggest that we do here? Well, actually, I always recommend that you go to the pastor first and kind of talk with the pastor about what's going, ha what's happening so that he can make that referral. Most congregations have a connection with the counseling agency where they have a few trusted, um, you know, Christian counselors that they feel comfortable referring people to knowing that they're going to see the importance of the faith component in the counseling sessions and work alongside with the pastor. So, you know, talk with the pastor first and see if they can make a referral to um, a Christian counselor that they regularly work with. Great. So um, how do we measure sort of the, the, feelings of of our, our mental health versus reality in the gospel um because when we struggle with with mental health it makes god feel very far away and it, it makes help seem very out of reach what do you do to kind of address that well again you mentioned just going back to the gospel promises that god gives us in his word um, we know our faith isn't based on our feelings and so, you know, sometimes when God may be feeling far away, when we're in that pit of despair, it's always comforting to um, be in his word, whether that's in private devotion or um, making sure we get to, you know, the worship service where we're hearing the gospel preached and hearing the hymns. So many of our hymns, you know, have wonderful uh, grace-filled messages of hope and comfort in them, uh, receiving communion again, is so important because we're actually receiving the very body and blood of Christ, um, which is very tangible for us to remember that he's right there. He's with us. He's becoming a part of us, that he's not far away. So when when one of these aspects is is uh, the body, the soul, and the spirit is, is, is struggling, all will, will suffer with it. But in the same way, to, to address one will also help the others. Uh, good mental health yeah. has a, a an impact on your physical well-being and, and vice versa, but also receiving spiritual care helps. And so this is something to, to lean into. That's fantastic. For sure. Are there any other important points you would kind of point out for us today? Well, I would just like to let people know that we have a website called Look Up Indiana, which you don't have to live in Indiana to access all the free resources there, but we do have faith-based mental health resources, including a congregational toolkit that has everything that's needed to talk about mental wellness within the church, including a Bible study, a sermon, a hymn, some prayers, uh, bulletin inserts and posters, and many more things. So I'd be happy to share that link with you, um, Harrison, and then um, feel free to, you know, put that out so people can just easily access those items. And again, they're all free. We'll drop that in the description. I'm looking forward to checking it out. Thanks so much for joining us today, Carol. Yeah, thank you so much, Pastor. It's been a have privilege. Have a great day. Great yeah, to have you. Bye-bye.